everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Penny. I am a master esthetician in Portland, Oregon, and I'm excited that you're here today, you guys, because we're doing the Friday Q&A. This is the video that I am doing every single week where I take as many of your comments and your questions and I answer them in one video. Today, you guys, we are gonna go over several questions. I have a big one that I really want to address, and then I will answer some more questions after that as well. This first one is such a big subject that it almost warrants its entire video but we're gonna get to it, you guys. Katia Katia says uh, some nice things, and then she says, would you please recommend products for skin glycation reverse, AGE? I am 40 years old, and my skin looks crepey and dehydrated for years now, no matter what products I use. After doing some research, I believe I'm aging prematurely due to skin glycation. Okay, this is such a good question, you guys. Glycation is a huge subject. We're gonna go over it in a little bit of a nutshell, and if you guys need more information, we will do a whole video. But in a nutshell, what is glycation? Glycation occurs when excess sugar molecules, so you've eaten excess sugar. You have a diet that has excessive sugar in it. Now, these excess sugar molecules bind to collagen elastin. They bind to other things as well, other proteins, et cetera, in our body, but when we're talking about skin, we're talking about them binding to collagen and elastin fibers. And then that prompts the formation of something called advanced glycation end products, or AGE. Now, the result of that is the glycated collagen and elastin fibers, they lose their ability to function normally, to be elastic, to you know provide the function of young, healthy skin. They no longer can do that. The other thing about glycated collagen and elastin is they tend to like each other and they will bind to each other doing something called cross-linking. And if you've ever seen glycated skin, it often looks like it's cross-hatched. And that is literally what is going on in the skin. The proteins in the skin, the collagen and the elastin, have they bind to each other and cross-linked, forming this thick, sometimes yellowed, um, cross-hatched looking skin. Now, the basic premise of all of this, you guys, is that you consume too much sugar, the excess sugar binds to the collagen and elastin, these AGEs are formed and the collagen and elastin becomes stiff and damaged. And then what happens after that is that these AGEs, they produce something called reactive oxygen species. Now, that sounds like some big word that you'd have no idea what it is, but it is something that you have all heard of, I'm sure, and that is free radicals. It is the reason why antioxidants exist and have been promoted in skincare and in health. The free radicals do all kinds of damage to our skin, causing more aging. Okay, what can we do about this? That's probably the big question here. So first things first, we need to avoid excess sugar consumption, okay? Then also, I firmly believe that we should use antioxidants inside and out. So talk to your healthcare provider and you know think about incorporating some vitamin C into your diet, and then we're gonna get to some other antioxidants that can have a profound effect on this as well. You want to consider using amino acids and peptides in your skincare and using vitamins in your skincare, vitamins A and vitamin C. You wanna consider not smoking. If you are a smoker and you're concerned about your skin and the aging of your skin, you definitely want to consider quitting smoking. And then a huge one, you guys, is to wear sunscreen. Okay, the next tip is definitely another one that you wanna discuss with your healthcare provider, but eating a diet that is rich in carnosine. Carnosine is actually a molecule that's composed of a couple of amino acids, alanine and histidine. Now, the reason why carnosine makes such a difference, and you can find it in meat, you can find it in fish, you can find it in poultry, white meat, chicken breasts have uh, carnosine, you want to look for those because the sugar molecules, those excess sugar molecules floating around in your body, they get diverted by uh, carnosine. So they will bind to carnosine instead of binding to collagen. Basically what carnosine does is it steps in and takes a bullet for the collagen, which is fantastic. It's a fantastic way to kind of, you know, divert, if you will, those free roaming excess sugar molecules. And then the other thing about carnosine is that it also acts as an antioxidant and it protects against protein glycation because as we just said, 
Those AGEs unfortunately also produce free radicals and the way to defend yourself against free radicals is antioxidants. Again, I know that all of this sounds very, very complex, but really if you reduce your sugar consumption and you consider antioxidants and vitamins in your diet, you will definitely be on the road to having younger looking skin and defending yourself against glycation. Now something from the external that comes in that causes something that looks a lot like what we're just talking about is something called solar elastosis. Now solar elastosis is actually different, but presents itself very similarly. And solar elastosis is actually an accumulation of abnormal elastin in the dermis because of excessive and prolonged sun exposure and sun exposure where there hasn't been any protection. So the result is skin that looks a lot like glycated skin and that is thick skin that's kind of coarse and wrinkly and you can see that cross hatching look. Now it's different because what has happened is our fibroblasts have been damaged and they're producing a bunch of elastin. And there's this whole chemical reaction that has to go on in order for our elastin to form normally and be elastic like it's supposed to. There's different chemical processes that have to happen in balance in order for that to that elastin to come out and be healthy. But when our fibroblasts and our skin has been damaged by prolonged sun exposure, Unfortunately, the fibroplasts continue to produce a bunch of elastin, but they stop producing some of the other chemicals responsible in the molding of that healthy elastin. The other thing that happens, unfortunately, is our fibroblast produces something called elephin, and elephin crystallizes elastin. Now that sounds terrible, right? So this solar damage not only makes this big imbalance in what the fibroblasts have to produce in order for our elastin to be healthy, it also increases the production of something that hardens that elastin, and that results in solar elastosis. Now guys, I know that this is a big, complicated, um, subject and that is a little tiny answer now the main thing with solar elastosis in my opinion is you can use retinoids you can use vitamin c and you absolutely 100 percent have to use sun protection protecting yourself from the sun especially if you are just 40 years old is going to definitely help protect you from solar elastosis in the future especially if you are someone who spends a lot of time in the sun. Now, I did read some interesting articles um, on PubMed, so they're not just, you know, random vloggers or bloggers or anything like that, that I am gonna link in the description box about some kind of interesting um, extracts and whatnot that may have the ability to help reverse some solar elastosis. I'm gonna link the I'm gonna link the article in the description box so that you can check it out for yourself because I'm, I'm not sure of the validity or of you know how profound effect that might have, but if solar elastosis is something that you are dealing with, it might be worth reading this article and just kind of looking further into this extract that may potentially help with that condition. So low sugar, antioxidants, and definitely protect ourselves from the sun with sunscreen. Those are the main, main tips. And as crazy as it is, this is one subject with glycation where honestly the topical stuff that we put on our skin, yeah, it's important, but man, a million times over what's going on on the inside is far, 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 more important in the aging of our skin when it comes to glycation than anything we put on our skin on the outside. This process is going on on the inside and unless we do something to not feed it so much literally with sugar, 
then that premature aging is gonna continue to happen. There isn't a lot of stuff that you're gonna put on your face topically that's gonna slow down that internal action going on unless you actually address the underlying problem and that's sugar. And I hate to say it, cause man, I love my sugar, you guys, I really do. But the wow, I really need to consider a low sugar diet. <laughs> I really, really do. So hopefully that answers your question. And I definitely know that these are huge sciencey subjects. So if you have any more questions about this or if you'd like a whole dedicated, more in depth video, I tried to keep it super nutshell because I think that it's such a big subject that I'd lose a bunch of people. They, they wouldn't care so much about it. Okay, we're gonna move on, you guys. The next question comes from Jilly Liang, and she said, tonight I did my first medical needling 0.5 on my whole face. My face is so terribly dry, what can I put on it? Now, I did answer her this question already, but I wanted to put this out there because I, I can't remember if I've answered this in a Friday Q&A or not, but if you, have, if you experience that, if you are medically needling and you are just so incredibly tight and dry and it's itchy and it's just so super uncomfortable, after about three hours, if you've needled at a 0.5, pretty comfortable that those channels have closed and you can go ahead and put on a little bit more hyaluronic acid and then seal that in with an occlusive moisturizer. That will help to mitigate trans epidermal water loss. That will help to keep that tissue hydrated. That will definitely help to calm that dry, tight, super itchy feeling. You're gonna go to bed and you will likely wake up in the morning feeling much, much, much better because you held some of that water in. Because when we do microneedle, we absolutely can cause some dryness, some tightness, some water loss, all of that stuff can happen. And really we're just weighing out the pros and cons of microneedling. We're stimulating collagen, and unfortunately we're gonna be dry for a minute. So definitely, as long as you've given those channels a chance to close, you can then lock in some hydration with an occlusive moisturizer before you go to bed. Okay, next question. I hope that helps some of you guys because I know that that's, that's definitely a question I've gotten so, so much. Okay, this one's from Lauren R. Keller and I get this one a ton too, you guys. She said, I just purchased the A7 pen and I'm curious why you have the A6 and the X5 as recommendations on Amazon, but not the A7. Now listen guys, I own the A7, I own the X5 and I own the A6, all three microneedling pens from Dr. Pen. I like them all. I recommend all three of them. I think all three are fantastic pens. The reason why I typically recommend the A6 and the X5 is they're both cordless. Now, there is a possibility that there is an A7 cordless version now, and I'm gonna check that certainly when I'm done with this video, but I really, really like the cordless option. And I like the accessibility of the cartridges and I just, they have, fun they have functioned really, really well for me. Do I like the A7? Yes, I do. I like that pen very, very much. But the pen that I got, the A7 that I have, has a cord. And it's not even a super, super long cord. So it's the pen that I typically reach for the least because of the cord. That's the only reason. So if you are okay with having a cord on your microneedling pen, the A7 is fantastic. I really do like that pen quite a bit. If you want a cordless pen like me, then the A6 and the X5 are excellent options. The A6 for the longest time was my preferred, it was my favorite, mostly because the cartridges were so easy to find and a variety of cartridges and they were less expensive. So I felt really good recommending that one because you weren't gonna get the pen and then not be able to find the cartridges. Now, next would be that X5. It is more powerful and I love the digital display, but it, at the time of those recommendation videos, it was harder to get all the cartridges. So that was the only reason. All three pens are excellent. If you have gotten one of those pens, you do not need another one of those pens, and I highly recommend all three of them. So hopefully that answers a question for some of you, because man, I get this question all the time, which pen do I like the best? So it really just depends on you know the options that you're looking for in a pen and whether or not you like corded or 
cordless. Okay, last question comes from Carrie Allen and it says, can't wait for the copper peptide suggestions. Okay, I wanted to tell you guys that after I made that video, I went ahead, I did several things. I have purchased Dr. Picard's book that I am um, definitely pouring over. I also went to his specific website that he owns and I purchased some of his products with my own money and I'm waiting for those to show up. So I definitely did buy a bunch of stuff to test out so that I can hopefully, you know, give you guys some kind of a recommendation. I'm gonna link his website in the description box. I am not affiliated in any way. I, I definitely don't get any kind of kickback or anything, but I did find in all of my searches that I kind of felt like that was legit. That was the real deal copper peptides, both the um, generation one and the generation two. Now, there is a lot on that website. So as soon as I get the products that I have ordered and I have a little time to test them, I will then be able to give you some recommendations based on my experience with the products. But up until then, I'd at least like to give you guys that, you know, that website so that you can go look there. I think it's a wealth of information and I feel pretty confident based on his scientific background and the fact that he's the one that came up with these copper peptides and he's really kind of the founding father of this whole copper peptide scientific situation. I feel really, really comfortable sending you guys there at least to peruse the website and check it out. But again, I am not affiliated and I haven't tried the products yet myself. So just sending you off to get some information for yourselves. And as soon as I can, I will update you for sure. Now, the last thing you guys is that I am actually leaving today. I'm filming this on Friday morning. I am actually leaving today to go to New York City and um, spend some time with my mom and my sister and hopefully see Abby Bliss White, possibly see Kate from the channel Kate the Great Beauty. And so next week, the Friday Q&A will be on Monday. So I do have another video coming up this in while I'm gone and it's on high frequency and I'm super excited for you guys to see that video. But I don't want you to think I forgot about you on Friday. It'll just be coming on Monday, okay? So I really hope that you guys have a fantastic weekend. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will definitely be on Instagram and everything. And on Sunday, when the high frequency video goes up, I will do my best to get in there and say hi in the comments. So when you guys see this video, I'll be traveling. So I probably won't get to answer a bunch of comments right away. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend and I will talk to you again very, very soon. Take care.